you've heard, welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Today, after defeating the final Titan in the last episode, we are moving on to another goal. This one way up here is to go finish off the Starfall Street. This should be our last Team Star crew member to defeat at the Fairy Crew base, storming the Fairy Crew's base. Ortega of the Rook, Rook, Rookback? Rookba? I don't know, squad. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, it's the boss of Team Star's Fairy Crew. Said to be the second strongest of the Team Star bosses, his family owns an apparel brand famed even in Paldea. He constantly looks down on others, perhaps due to his cushy upbringing. So we'll be making our way over to there in today's episode, and hopefully it all goes well. So let's one thing pull up the map again really quickly just to make sure we know our path over. Because I can, you know, swim over and do it from there. But is there any better way to do that? For now, it looks like I might be better off going back to Medali, going up this path, getting this one, and just sort of making our way through this mountain. So yeah, let's get started with that. Right over this way, we'll head from Medali east and just hope for the best. Okay, so we're back here in Medali. I don't know if I've talked to you yet. Have I gotten enough Pokemon battles around here? I've done two, I need five. So we'll look around a little bit and we'll get back to that. But I think for now, which way was it? It was this one to the left, not to the right. The one on the right will bring me somewhere totally different. So I won't want to do that. The last episode we did catch quite a few Pokemon and here's another new one already. This is, is it the Dene, I think? Maybe? The Dene, yeah, we caught it off guard too. So we should be able to throw a quick ball really fast here and maybe get an easy catch. It's only level 32, so chances are yes. All right. So there we go. The Dene was caught. Pretty easy one. We get a lot of experience from that. At least for it being just like one little Pokemon we caught pretty quickly, you know? So number 200, the Dene, the antenna Pokemon, is an electric fairy type. The Dene emit electrical waves from the whiskers on their cheeks to communicate with each other. When low on electricity, they curl up and sleep. All right then, that's pretty cool. And that goes right there. So the Dene does have one evolution, I think, that we'll hopefully get to at some point, but for right now we'll jump over here and grab this little Pokebob and staring at a Hyper Potion. That's pretty nice. So this way is where I need to go. If I run into any trainers or something, we'll definitely take those on. And any other new Pokemon, but it's nice and sunny on now. It was raining before. And there is a trainer waiting for us right over this way. I've got some sleeping Persians, that's cute. Uh, hi, I think my Pokemon is the cutest. We'll see about that one. You seem to have a discerning eye. Have a look at the cutest Pokemon there is. So we are challenged here by Ander the Waiter. And I have Bergmite. Bergmite is very cute, I'll give you that much. I don't know if it's the cutest, because you know, look at Palmot here, so adorable. But we'll use some close combat just to defeat it really quick. Shouldn't even be an issue. And there we have it. Cool. So there we go, Bergmite faints. And we've defeated Ander the Waiter. Ah, how utterly adorable Bergmite looks when it's defeated. We got over 2,000 in prize money, which is pretty cool. It's plain as day that Bergmite's the cutest of all, but my friends just don't see it. Anyway, you can find Bergmite on Glaciado Mountain. You ought to catch one for yourself. All right, then. well, I'll definitely look out for it, but we've already caught one, so I don't think I need to worry about it too much. But I will grab a Pokeball over this way and get the Experience Candy S. And ooh, there's a Pseudo Wudo. Did we catch that already? I think we did. It looked like it, it had a pair. Run, they're moving. Where are you gonna go? I can't tell, it's moving too quickly. I haven't, I haven't, and it's gone. What an experience that was. I'm so confused. That Pseudo Wudo wanted to get out of there. If we see another one, then I'll try to catch it, but apparently I've not caught Pseudo Wudo. We did get um, Vigoroth in the last episode, though, so I don't have to worry about it now. What about this Starly evolution? Um, I think I have. Is that what me zoom in on them? Pressing the button just wasn't working. Uh, we get an Ultra Ball for free, but I think I'm still heading down the right way. Haven't seen any other trainers for now, but I'm sure more will pop up soon. Uh, we get a revive. But it's sort of refreshing that, you know, we're sort of seeing some similar Pokemon, just because that way we don't have to worry about catching every single thing we pass. And obviously we'll be going back through the game to get more Pokemon soon, I'm sure, but we can Agua Fairy there and a Burn Heal. But I guess we're gonna just keep going down this way. I do see another trainer out this way waiting for us, so let's not keep them waiting. Over here, where's the Battle Court? This is a Courier Trainer. Um, I need to make a delivery to Medali's Battle Court. Well, I don't think I can help you too much with that. If you're battling me, you're not getting to the court. You're challenged by Alfonso the Courier. 
We have Altaria, ooh, okay. Well, Palmot should do fine with that because I think it's Flying Dragon, right? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see, we'll just do Discharge for now. We have a huge level advantage on them, so either way, it should do some good work. Almost fully knocking them out. So I use Safeguard. Watch this, or cloach itself in a Mystical Veil. Let's try Nuzzle. Got it, awesome. So, Altaria fainted. And that's a lot of experience for us. So, Gagoat. Now with Gagoat, I think that's also Grass type, so we'll put out Talonflame. Having that fire flying combo, can't really go wrong with it, right? So, Talonflame versus Gagoat. I think they have one more Pokemon after this, so we, we still have a lot to go against here, but. Yeah, Gagoat, Gagoat's definitely Grass type. So, which one has more damage? It looks like right now Heat Wave, so we'll definitely do that. This might even be a one-hit takedown. It is, awesome. Makes it much easier. Okay, what's your last Pokemon gonna be? Dreadnought. So this is where we probably wanna switch again. It's ground, I think it's ground water type, right? So I'm trying to think about like what exactly would be good against it that wouldn't be a problem. I could try Palma and just use the close combat. That might be better than anything else. So here comes Palma. And here comes Dreadnought. And yeah, we can use, both of these are super effective. I didn't know if the ground would cancel out. Um, I think it's ground water, but I might be wrong. Let's just try Discharge really quickly. That was great, super effective. So no, we're fine. And there we go, we've defeated Alfonso the Courier. Maybe it's, it's water rock. I can't find my destination or my way to victory. Well, that's a bit of a problem. It's sort of your job to do that, so I hope you can improve soon. Uh, Medali has a gym, but I don't see a battle court anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably in Medali, not way out here, so gotta head over that way. Anyways, let's keep on our adventure here. This bridge looks very familiar, but I'm pretty sure we haven't been over this way. I know we are seeing a lot of similar Pokemon. Whoa, here we go. The last time we tried to get Saw's Buck, it was a different Pine, but maybe not worth worrying about too much. What's over here? I'm getting sidetracked again. Okay, so we get a quick revive, which those are always good. There's even a TM waiting for me. And some Pokemon all over the place trying to get me. I'm sorry, a little, uh, butch ender, but I'm not too interested. I guess I could just throw up Palmon like this and deal with you that way. That'd probably be better. There's a couple of Pokemon up here, but just nothing I haven't seen already. So we got Thunderfang, though. That's always nice. And there's one more right here that I want to get. Okay, we're getting some good experience from that. That's something I just need to keep in mind to do more often. I just throw out my Pokemon so that they can fight when we're busy. It's so useful. We got one over here. This is fresh water. Ow. <laughs> Whoops. And this is where we need to go to the right. See, so yeah, I guess we'll just keep going up this way, run into a couple more trainers if possible, like this one over here. Talk to me. I would love to. Hi. Hey, you talked to me. Thanks, now let's battle. You're challenged by Hiker Estella. And they have Whizcatch. Okay, now this is a groundwater type. I'm almost positive. So I think some normal electric type moves might not work too well. Let's just try close combat and see how much damage that does. It's enough to get rid of them. So I'll take it. Whizcatch has fainted, and that's the only Pokemon he had. So pretty nice. We get some good experience and defeat Hiker Estella. Wow, you're bold. Thank you. All right then, so we'll, we'll talk to them really quickly. I guess you wouldn't have come to talk to me if you weren't confident in your battle skills. That is definitely true. I think we're pretty confident for where we are at the game. Got the Hyper Potion right there. And we're just sort of making our way up this mountain. There's gonna be more trainers waiting for us. And there we go, Palma can get busy with some of those. A backpacker's only weakness. All right then. A backpacker's only weakness is steel type moves. Huh. So what type of Pokemon do you have then? Backpacker Nil. Nil sent out Leafeon. Ah, huh. interesting to see Leafeon. So I, I'll just try close combat. I know that the electric type moves aren't gonna work too well for us here, so maybe just fighting our way through it. That's enough. That was just sort of pure strength more than anything. 
Luciana paints it. Cool. And that's level 59 for uh, Palmont. Frigiraf. Okay, Frigiraf. I think I can keep with fighting if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe fighting is weak to it. I guess we'll find out in just a moment. Uh, okay, this is normally effective. I'm running out of power points for it though, unfortunately. There we go. One hit takedown though is always nice to see. And we've defeated Backpacker Nil. Almost close to a couple more level ups, so. Darn, you saw through my lie? I guess so. Oh, they were lying, so Steel Type would have been good. My real weakness is reality type moves. I just want to get away from reality. <laughs> uh, all right, well, good luck with that. Going on a good hike can definitely help. All right, then. so where are we going around here, though? I, I guess there is you to battle. The Academy has a secret. And what could it be? If you can defeat me, I'll tell you the Academy's big secret. Ooh. You were challenged by Vital the Student. Maybe Vidal? Toxic Rick. Okay, so it's sort of fighting versus fighting here. I guess we'll just use our Electro type moves and see if that is enough to do away with them. Um, Cause yeah, the fighting's not gonna be very effective. So we'll just try Discharge. Ooh, and that's plenty enough. We have a huge advantage over these trainers, it seems. What do you got next? A little bit more experience enough for Flo to get to level 59. Clawitzer. Actually, this is fine then. That should be a water type, I think. It's like a crab, right? Yeah, there we go. This actually might be more so dragon. We'll just try discharge and see how much damage it does. Oh no, it's super effective. I'm pretty sure there's like a, some kind of crab kind of Pokemon like that that's dragon, but I might be wrong. Anyways, we got level 61 for Doxbun. That's cool to see. I lost? Then I guess I've got no choice but to spill the beans. Say, so what's the big secret? Very interested in hearing. The Academy had some kind of big brouhaha back when I first enrolled. All the teachers at the time quit. The teachers we've got now are all hired after that. Whoa, that's interesting to know about. Wonder what could have happened. Maybe at some point we'll figure out, but we're at Glaciato Mountain once again. We've been here before, just from a different angle, but ooh, we got Snover. If I could throw a quick ball at this one, that'd be pretty useful. So let's give that a go. We caught Snover off guard, so we have a chance, you know, throw a, uh, a quick ball and just hope it's an easy catch. And whoa, we got the evolution of Mud Spray there. I don't know if we got that in the distance, but we'll see in a moment. First, let's we'll just focus on catching Snover, and we got it, nice and easy. Okay, so let's see our Pokedex entry. For this one, number 352, Snover, the Frost Tree Pokemon, is a grass ice type. Seemingly curious about people, they gather around footsteps they find on snowy mountains. Cool. So glad to get that one. And that goes in our Pokedex right there. We'll have to get the evolution for it soon too. But oh no, who wants to fight now? It's this little Sneasel. You know what? Uh, I'll just run from this one. Cause I'd rather them fight normally, so I w or like with the little thing like this, because that way I wouldn't have to use any power points. But do I have that evolution? I don't. So let's try for this one now. If I could get the quick ball catch with this, this would be pretty important, right? I would think so. Mudsdale, it's level 37. And there is also another trainer up that way. There's just a whole collection of little Pokemon running around this little uh, thing, whatever you might want to call it. I guess a, it's like a ravine in a way. Oh, I do see a Pokemon Center up ahead. That'd be really useful. They hit me with a critical and it doesn't do much. Would Nuzzle do anything against you? It doesn't affect Muzzle, because it's ground type. Um, they're gonna use Heavy Slam on us. Okay, what can I switch to instead? Because if we use... Some of you were letting me know that if I run away... Well, let me try this really quick. If I run away and I throw another Quick Ball, I can just catch it more easily that way. We'll see if that works. I'll try it at least once or twice and we'll see if we get any luckier with it. Um, but it might not. All right, come on. Will that be an easy catch? Oh, most, come on. All right, we'll, we'll switch over to a different Pokemon. Let's see if maybe I can just uh, get them with like Oink alone. That'd be nice. So if I could just normally attack them, put them to sleep, throw a Pokeball, I'd love to get them on sale right now, so. I do prefer it when the quick balls actually work though. <laughs> I mean, we're making pretty good progress throughout today's episode so far, so I don't mind it too much. They're using strength, they're getting big and strong, but it doesn't do too much. Now we get the 
remove their tempo. Ooh. Okay, so, yeah, for right now, just a headbutt. If we're lucky, it might make you flinch, but they're using heavy slam again. So now I could just, I could just use Yawn on you and then throw an Ultra Ball or two. I think that would be enough, but we'll see. They're getting drowsy. Here comes that heavy slam again. And I think we'll just do Ultra Ball. Yeah, right here. Can this be a catch? Oh, they're stubborn. I think we're just gonna keep trying because sooner or later they'll be snoozing. But it failed. And their eyes look closed. There they go. All right, well, I hope they're having sweet dreams. And let's see if we get this. Come on. It's gotta be a catch. There it is. Finally, Mudsdale was caught. That one took a lot more effort. But we got it. Some good experience along the way too. I might wanna heal my Pokemon before we take on this trainer, but for right now, number 273, Mudsdale. Draft horse Pokemon, a ground type. Its legs are fortified with mud and harder than stone. And they can reduce a large truck to scrap with one kick. That is so cool. So a very powerful Pokemon. They're weighing over 2,000 pounds. And it goes right there. Just what, you know, we have a ton more. Oh no, evolutions to get. I didn't want to fight you. Okay, so we should be good just to take on the scientist. I don't know, there's some scientism being bombarded by Pokemon. I'm just so sick of research. Help distract me so I, so I can forget about my work for a while. Sounds good. Everybody needs a break from time to time. You were challenged by Roberto the Scientist. They have Jolteon. All right, well, I think we can handle Jolteon. Is there a little Pokemon over there on the ground? What is that? I don't know. Uh, but for right now, we're just gonna focus on, I guess, just doing close combat because Obviously, the electric type moves aren't too useful. But there we go. Got that pretty well. Jolteon is fainted. And there we go. Easy fight. We defeated um, the scientist. What is your training method? And what do you feed to your team? Are those moves from TMs? Some of them, yeah. We feed them ni nice and tasty sandwiches. Even when I'm, I, I, I want to stop questioning everything, I can't. This is, this is why I'm a scientist. See, what is this? Oh, it's a little dog again. Should have remembered that. Okay, if I could avoid some stuff here really quickly so that I can just go and heal and we can restore our power points, that'd be great. All right then, so yeah, just right over here. I'll go talk to you. Open to the Pokemon Center, still up and about? Yes, we are. So let's heal our Pokemon. But I'm glad we were able to take on every trainer along the way so far, just to make sure that we are getting some good experience and Stuff like that. We also technically get Pokedex entries. They're not the full entry, but it's, you know, it's some kind of marker on the list. So let's see what's out and about now. We got Sneasel, or Sneeze, whatever it is. Sneasler, I think, but, ooh, Gardevoir. We don't have Gardevoir caught, so if I could, I think that caught you by surprise, hard to tell. If we could just get a quick ball throw here, this would be a pretty huge Pokemon to get. All right, here comes my quick ball. And maybe, just maybe, we can get an easy catch on Gardevoir. Great, now do we have Rots in the back there? I think we do. Guess we'll see in just a moment, but there's two level ups, level 50 and 59 for uh, Wink Lone and Yasukurata, but number 64, Gardevoir, the Embrace Pokemon, is a psychic fairy type. It unleashes psychic kinetic energy at full power. When protecting a trainer, it is bonded closely with. That's cute. All right then, so we'll send that to our boxes for now. And we don't have Curl yet, which is the evolution of Rots, but I'm sure if we see it, we'll go for it. Right now, I'll send Palmod out to just clean things up a little, and we'll keep going. So our goal right now is to continue up this way. Oh, there's Jellybird again. I could sneak up behind you, and then toss a Pokeball. Let's see if I can get a quick ball catch. Because I tried getting them before, it didn't quite work out for us. Um, This time, though, I think there's a good chance. Especially since they're a lot lower level than we are at this point. No, but they jump out again. Bellybird's a tough one. They have a present for, whoa, well, happy holidays to you too. <laughs> All right then, let's try it. It's super effective, that was my problem last time, is that I used this thinking, oh, it won't do that much damage, and it does all the damage. All right, well, mistakes were made again. 
That's okay. I'll get it with a quick ball catch eventually. But what about Crabrawler? We got Crabrawler. We definitely have a lot of these Pokemon. Cub Chew for sure. But more trainers are waiting for us along this way. And this is the evolution of Snover. No, 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 that's just Snover. Thought it was the evolution. I was wrong. So there's actually quite a few trainers in view. Let's try this one. Delivery. I'm a courier fan. I just like to dress up like this. Huh. Okay. You're challenged by Xavier the cur Courier, but not Courier. The Courier fan. Who has a Raptor that's perfect for Palmon. Can handle that, no problem. So, the Intimidation does make our attack fall, but I'm not too worried about that. We will just do Discharge. And boom, we defeat Staraptor without too much of an issue. What other Pokemon might they have? That's it for now, we defeated Xavier the Courier. Please sign here. All right, well, as long as they're having fun. So now Palma, and we'll talk to you a little bit more. Couriers have a pretty passionate fan base. It may be a niche interest, but we're out, out there. Cool. Are you not gonna go? There you go. Come on, go find him. And over this way, I can already see. You can grab that. A rare bone. Always good. What about you? That's right. Where does he two trainers so close to each other? That's right. I'm totally lost. I can point you in the right direction if you want. You're challenged by Valeria the Student. And they have Taurus, whoa. Are there horns? That is different. It's got different horns and like little blue dots on its mane. Huh, what's the deal with that? I don't know, but that was still super effective. So I guess there's maybe different kinds of Paldean Tauruses. I will have to look out for that for sure. Whoa, it was Zora, Zororark again. Okay, never mind. What a weird facade. It's a special Tauros. Was that because it was Zororark? I don't think so, but maybe. Um, now it's gonna send out an actual Tauros. And I think with this one, so what typing is this? I guess we can just use Discharge. Why is that super effective? Is it water type because of that? It might be. Whoa, that's so weird. Okay, well there's some extra experience. Miss Magius. Okay, this is where we maybe switch Pokemon again. I just can't entirely remember what might be good against Miss Magius. So maybe we'll just do Miascarada. We'll, we'll do our normal grass move. It'll do some extra damage for sure. Okay, so here comes Miss Magius. And, oh no, this is super effective, perfect. So let's try the Dark Pulse. I don't know if we've used this too much since getting it. There you go, super effective, amazing. And we defeated Valeria the Student. You're not lost, lost at all, are you? Don't tell me, you actually wanted to come out here? Yep, we're on our way to the final Team Star crew base. I was trying to catch a Pokemon, followed it all the way out here, and ended up getting lost. I think I'll call a flying taxi, you definitely should. It's pretty cold up here, so you gotta make sure you're dressed properly. So what do we have around here? We got the Super Potion, a Revive, and th there's that little ghost dog again I'm trying to avoid. But we're not finding you know, a ton of new Pokemon like we normally do at some points. This little cup you're eating a little berry, that's cute. I might just send down Palmot for these Sneasels. But I'm not seeing too many more Pokemon around here, so I think we're about good just to hop down this way, but taking an extra look around just before I do. Okay, so yeah, you can see the town is right down that way, and we also have maybe a different path I was supposed to take. I don't really know the easiest way to get to this town. But I guess we could also fall down this way. We haven't done a Terror Raid in a little bit, there's also a trainer here waiting for me. A uniform. Oh, let's go ahead and fight those guys, but it's all to you. A uniform looks really good on you. Do you think it would look good on me too? I don't actually go get one and try it on. You're challenged by Backpacker Markel. They have 
Mabossif, whoa! I've only seen Arvin's Mabossif. I don't think we've seen a Mabossif just out and about, so that's pretty cool. They do have the Intimidate move. I think it might be a normal type, so we'll try close combat and see if it does any extra damage. Yeah, it definitely is. Okay, awesome. Such a cool looking Pokemon though. I love the little, the little grin, the little smirk. And then we go to level 64 Palmont. I want someone to move Double Shock. What is that? Ooh, okay. The user discharges all the electricity from its body to perform a high damage attack. After using this move, the user will no longer be electric type? I don't know if we need that. What does Palmont have to say? Wants to put it over Revival Blessing. The Revival Blessing has got me out of some pretty big pinches. I would like to keep it. Um. I don't think we need it. What would it be if it's not electric type? Would it just be fighting? Ah. Huh. I will keep it in mind, but I don't think we need it just now. Backpacker Mark has about this now. The Porion we can keep with um Palmot here. Since he's an electric type move. Okay, so we'll use discharge. And there we go. See that's plenty. It's plenty. Okay, what do you have next? One last Pokemon, Weavile. Okay, so Weavile is gonna be an Ice Dark type, I think. So if we were to bring out Talonflame, we could do Heat Wave, and that would do a lot. Definitely enough to just defeat them. Because this is the evolution of Sneasel, I'm pretty sure. So we'll battle, use Heat Wave. And we got it, super effective, glad to see it. Okay, well there we go, we defeated Backpacker Markel. Is that a no? I, I guess so. Seeing you out having adventures in uniform, or in your uniform, reminded me of my own, own school days, that's all. That's always nice to reminisce a little bit. But what, what do we have here? This is gonna be a fighting type, but it's Impidimp, which I already have Impidimp. I know I need to grind this up for some experience candies at some point, but for right now, I don't think we need it too much. So let's just keep jumping and going over this route. I wanna get to this Pokemon Center and grab a couple of extra things along the way. That's not too big of a deal. All right. I mean, yeah, this is definitely the base though. You can see it just at the, at the shore. Very cool. Or at the North Province Area 3. But we also have one of these guys We're having some nice battles. How many battles have I gotten done so far then? Zero, okay, and I need to defeat four. So I'll work on that for sure, but for now we'll heal up really quickly to restore our power points and stuff, and then we'll get back to looking around. So we're back to it then. I do see over this way, we have Frostmoth, which I tried to catch, I think, last episode, but unfortunately it got away from us. So there's another chance right here. Oh no, that was Venomoth, this is Frostmoth. So got that mixed up, that's fine. We, we can still take it on here and I think maybe even catch it. Please. There it is, okay, pretty easy catch there. We get Frozmoth. And that's an easy experience for sure. We get number 351, Frozmoth. The Frostmoth Pokemon is an ice bug type. It causes blizzards as it flies around with its huge chill emanating wings. Clean melt water is its favorite thing to drink. Gotcha, it's, it's so elegant and fancy, I like it. So, we'll send you to a box for now. And yes, Nam go, uh, evolves into Frostmoth, which is pretty nice. Okay, there's a lot of gold ducks and stuff. A lot of Pokemon I have already caught out here. So, I can send out um, Palmoth to do a lot of work, actually. That should be some easy stuff. But over here, I have um, a guard spec. And then what about you over here? Oh, I think uh, Clive is gonna talk to us, actually. We're getting a call. It's Cassiopeia. I see you're almost at the fifth base. Hold up inside there is Team Star's last remaining squad. You fought well to make it this far. Thank you, Zebra. Of course. Zebra, Cassiopeia. So you made it as well, Clive. Of course, it's the last base. I wouldn't wanna miss out on the action. Clive, I owe you my thanks. Your help has been invaluable to the operation. I'm sorry I was so wary of you at first. Well, that's all under the water under the bridge. When we're finished with this base, 
Will that be the end of the Operation Starfall then? Not quite. We'll still need to handle Team Star's secret mastermind of last of all. Do we have any leads on how to find them? I'm hoping they'll come out in the open once all the squad bosses have stepped down. I see. We've come so far. Only a few more steps left. Don't let me down, either of you. Cassiopeia is hung up. All right. Thanks to you, Zebra, I've slowly but surely come to understand Team Star. I know what I need to do, and I know what my final decision will be. For that, I can't thank you enough. Take care in that base, Master Zebra. Ah, sorry. Forget all. F sorry for getting all polite there. Don't know what came over me. Well, I guess we're about ready to take it on. Before we do, there was that one other trainer I wanted to take on. Where, where, where were they? Ooh, whoa, whoa, we got Vespaquin, isn't it? Oh, we got Floette too. There's there's Pokemon all over here. Let's get. We already have Combi. Never mind. I don't need Combi. There's so many Pokemon all of a sudden. Hi, Combi. You're so adorable, but I'm going to run from you. And then turn around. It's not fast, big one. What, what is this one called? This is, um, they're, they're so small. They're so hard to see. No, not you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm trying to catch a Pokemon right next to you, but the game's controls were sort of silly. And it's running from me. Okay, I'm going over there in just a moment. What are these Pokemon? Are they, they're Floettes, yeah. Can you please get back here? I have not caught you and I, I want to catch you. All right, right here, I'm just going to get you. All right then, so you are, no it is Vespiquen. I don't know why I thought that I got the name mixed up. There's a trainer I wanted to take on. So let's do this quick ball, catch this Vespiquen and take on that trainer as well. Come on, don't be difficult with this one. Oh, you're kidding me, you're kidding me. Great, they're using Destiny Bond. I might just try to use the Nuzzle. If it works, it works, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay, that's perfect actually. That'll be Paralyzation, they'll be halfway down. Exactly what we're looking for. So, best we could move because it's paralyzed. That's exactly the plan. So now we throw an Ultra Ball. But can we get the catch? Yes, we can. So, Combi's evolution, Vespiquen, was caught. And. We have the Pokedex entry, number 39, Vespiquen, the beehive Pokemon is a bug flying type. It raises grubs in the holes in its body. It secretes pheromones to control combi. Gotcha. And that goes right there. So you over here, I've been wanting to battle you. You're ready for it, such beauty. I really do like how the snow becomes grassy around right here. Uh, such beauty only to be marred by ugly piles of junk. I can't stand it. Are they talking about maybe the, the Team Star crew base? You're challenged by De Desiree the Artist. They have got the tell. So we, we've seen the thing that evolves from this. I guess we'll try close combat. I don't know if that'll be any good. It's enough to almost get them, even if it's not very effective. Here's how much more powerful we are. It did say before that this Team Star crew base is uh, the second most powerful. So I guess we didn't really do them in the most perfect preferred order. There was one that was slightly more difficult that we've already done, which if I had to guess had to be Ares, because that was the one we struggled with the most. But I guess we'll see soon enough. But hey, for right now we defeat Desiree the Artist. Sorry, sorry. Guess I shouldn't have taken out my frustration on you. It's okay, that's what battles are for, right? Is that one of those Team Star bases? I guess they must have put a lot of effort into building it. All right then, so we'll send out our Palmot to get rid of some of these, because they're all just walking around. We've already caught the Flamingo. So, we'll try to move around all that, but we're about ready to take on this base. I just need to grab this thing, the Hyper Potion, and let's check this out then. Oh, here we go. I will return later when it is time for the young master's piano lesson. Until then, please give him my regards. G yes, Mr. Harrington. Hmm? And who might you be, young man? A friend of the young master, perhaps? 
Uh, I'm not sure. Ah, I see. Since you seem unaware, I must inform you that this is the base of the Team Star's ferry crew, the Ruckbach Squad, led by young Master Ortega. Um, Mr. Har Harrington? I don't think we're supposed to be giving out that information. No? Then please accept my apologies. Do you have any ideas as to who this young man might be? He's no friend of ours. You know, I think he might be here to try to take us on. Understood. In that case, I take it you're an adversary of the young master? I guess that follows? Is that so? Well then, that leaves me with one last thing to ask you. Huh? Would you be so kind as to indulge me in a quick battle? Sure. I'm always down to battle whoever asks. Splendid, then let us begin. So I wonder if they'll have fairy type Pokemon as well, because if so, they'll be weak to steel and poison. You're challenged by Pokemon trainer Harrington. And they have more ground. Ooh, okay, that definitely seems to be the case. I mean, for right now, I think we're fine with just sort of brute forcing a little bit here. We can do something like Discharge, but I definitely want to switch my teammates over a little bit later. Okay, so their special attack grows sharply. We're just gonna use Discharge. Got it. Critical hit as well, so that's always good to see. And... Hatrin. You know what, let's switch Pokemon. I wanna get over to Masquerada and just try Flower Trick or something. Fairy might be good against Stark. I guess we'll see, so this might be a bad idea, but if we could just one-shot them with the uh, critical move, that'd be fine. Oh, it's so adorable, though. Um, but yeah, we'll use the Flower Trick really quickly. We'll see for ourselves. It does do a one-hit knockdown with that critical hit. Beautiful. The Hatchum's gonna faint. And there we go, you've defeated Pokemon Trainer Harrington. Well, well. Not too bad of a battle, right? An outstanding performance. However, be aware that young Master Ortega's battle prowess far surpasses my paltry skills. You would do well to take care. Now, if you excuse me. Ha ha, the love of V-Star. <laughs> All right. That gentlemanly guy used to be the director of the academy, I think. At least, that's what I heard. Now he's, like, tutoring the boss or something. He shows up here sometimes to take the boss to his lessons. Hang on, why am I explaining this to you? There's no doubting you're here to make trouble, so I gotta let everyone know. Hasta la 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 star. I always mispronounce that, I'm sorry. Oh, and we're getting a call from Cassie Pia again? I see the guard has been dealt with. Good job. That base belongs to Team Star's fairy crew, the Ruckbox Squad. Their base, Ortega, is the mechanic of the team. He may be the youngest of the bosses, but his battle skills are no joke. Underestimate him, and things will go south for you quickly. He's also a real lead from the back type. He gets his grunts to do all the dirty work for him. But his weak point is his short fuse. Get him good and angry, and he'll march out to the front lines to deal with you himself. In terms of tactics, there's nothing else for it but to take down all the lackeys he sends your way. Just tough it out until Ortega shows up, and go from there. Ring the bell on the gates once you're ready to kick off this phase of the operation. Time to wipe the Rook Boss Squad off the map. All right then, so yeah, let's give this a try. I'll ring the bell. And oh, actually, hold on, before I do, I definitely need to change our party up a little bit because I have Palmat, I want Talon Flame not here for, for sure. We'll do something like that. And then maybe this is fine that way. Like we, we have Doxmon that way, they are fairy type. So at least we'll have like something that won't be too affected by the fairy type moves. Okay, so let's try this. Yep, we're good to go. And we'll see for ourselves here. Will we be able to defeat the final Team Star crew base as we're pouring in here in just a moment? Even the smallest stars can light up to the sky when they shine together as constellations. We're the last bastion of Team Star. Losing isn't an option. Hey kid, you listening? If you beat 30 of our Pokemon in 10 minutes, we'll call the boss out to deal with you. How's that for hospitality? Well, you know what? I'm ready for the challenge to defeat 30 of Team Star's Pokemon so we have this excellent view of the ocean. All right, I'm going for it. I see a couple popping up over this way. A Doc Buns and stuff, so 
we're pretty used to it. And then over this way, there's a few more we can go for. With a Tinkaton and stuff. That's cool. And what about down this way, maybe? The Tinka Tink and Tinka Top. That's what it is. Couple more over there, but oh, look at these Mimikyu. Definitely want to grab those. And then down this way, we have some Gardevoir and Curlia. That's looking pretty nice. Over this way, this will be ni nice for Palmon. Um, there we go. I guess they are fairy. They're water fairy, I suppose. But now we have this whole grouping. Then whoa, we got the these guys. I forgot what they're called. But we only need to defeat eight more Pokemon. So we're making some great progress so far. Not really too much of my team is all beat up. So yeah, we're doing fine. Those are those are um. What is it? Oh, it's not telling me what, what the names of these are just yet. Florgus, Florgus, gotcha. And then four more is all I need. So a couple over here. So now another one. And then a few more over this way. Should be no problem. Ready? And got it. So there we go, we defeated 30 Pokemon here. Maybe even a couple more. Get 32 out of 30. Our defenses are breached. It's all up to the boss now. Here he comes. The final Team Star boss is on their way. I like their car. Very stylish. Boss of Team Star's Fairy Crew, Ortega. Huh, so here's Zebra. Okay, talk about underwhelming. I was expecting someone, I don't know, a little more beefed up. Well, whatever. I don't care who you are. I not like I'm gonna lose to you anyway. If you think fairy types are all about cuteness, you're in for a nasty surprise. Okay, well then let's get this battle on the road. We're taking on Ortega. Oh, whoa, they have some cool little tricks there. You're challenged by Ortega of Team Star. Oh, and they're starting with an Asmorella here, so Palmont's actually in a perfect position to take them on. I promise I'll play nice, so don't blame me when this battle sends you blubbering back home. Okay, so we can handle you no, no problem, problem by just doing this charge. But they are level 50 Pokemon, so it's pretty serious deals here. It is super effective, but not quite finishing them off. Asmorella is paralyzed, so it might not be able to move, but it is still able to use Play Rough. Ooh, and that is close to defeating us. We need to be very careful. Oopsie, did you just realize how unmatched you are? You want to give up? Now's the time. Not quite. We're gonna discharge you here. So you have to switch Pokemon. That's when we are probably gonna switch Pokemon ourselves. Because I think Fairy is good against fighting, and that's sort of the, the concern there. With that done, Wigglytuff is coming out. So if we switch, I think now might be a good time to try something like Talonflame. Well, actually, yeah, I guess. I feel like this is gonna be a tough battle no matter what we do. So we have to be really careful with which moves we choose. All right then, so here comes Talonflame. And here comes Wigglytuff. We can handle this one, right? We're just gonna do ceiling over and over with a 12 level lead. You'd think it would be enough for almost one hit takedowns, and so far it is. We're gonna use Body Slam against us, which does some damage, but nothing too concerning. The paralyzation is a lot more of a problem. So, I might just do ceiling and hope it doesn't actually affect us this time. But we're good here. I might have to use a paralyzed heal soon. Because we don't want that messing with us later. Dox Bun. So, what if I switch to my own Dox Bun? Like, it's certainly possible that I can do that. Um, but maybe it's just fine to stick with what I currently have. Uh, hard to say. I mean, I could also switch to something like Floatzel. Well, Floatzel doesn't have anything super effective against them, they shouldn't have anything super effective against us, you know? And that's something to keep in mind. Our normal moves are pretty strong. If we just use those, we can sort of damage them down without having to worry about getting damage down too much ourselves. So here comes Doxmon, and we are just going to do a, I think a Hydro Pump here is gonna be the most damaging thing. It has a low accuracy, but, or lower accuracy of PD, but it's still plenty enough to do some massive damage like that. Have a taste of this slick move. Bet you can't handle my Pokemon's adorable strength. I don't know. They're gonna use Play Rough, which really doesn't do too much to us at all. So, we're fine. We 
restored some HP even with the leftovers. So we're just gonna do, oh, maybe I should've done a Surf instead, but will it land? Ah, they avoided it. See, that's what I was concerned about. If we did Surf, it would've been a guaranteed hit. But we avoided that, okay, it's all balanced now. We're fine, and we get the heal from leftovers still too, so you know what, it worked out pretty well. So now we definitely use Surf. I don't wanna mess with anything else. And then after this, we just have the, um, the car, the Rev Room to deal with. So Doc Spun's gonna faint. And now here comes Rubber Vroom itself. What the heck? Why is my team on the ropes? That's totally not fair. They have Missy Surge. Miss swirled around the battlefield. For right now, I think we'll just keep with what we currently have. If I can just keep using Surf. It's level 50, so just damaging it down normally with some of our moves like this might just be the answer. Magical Torque is definitely going to hurt a bit. But we'll just return the favor with some more Surf. I think this is the way to get this done. Let's try it again. It's already going to get, yeah, almost halfway down. So this is working out great. We don't always have to worry about super effectiveness when our normal moves are just very powerful. With Aria's Pokemon, it was a little bit scarier because that one was like just sort of snowballing out of control with all the extra stats and stuff, but we don't see that as much here. So we'll go for another Surf. And before things get to be too much for Floatzel here, as they're using the Confuse right, now might be a great time just to switch Pokemon over. All right, so. We'll go to Pokemon, and we have things like Oink alone, who has Belch, but I don't have a, a berry right now, so. We could also just get Doxbone out here and just do some normal fairy type moves versus fairy type moves. It means that, you know, it should all just be normally effective. Doxbun, you know, pretty damaging Pokemon at this point, so I wouldn't mind it. We'll give it a try. So they'll use, they'll use Magical Torque. It doesn't do much, you know, so we're fine. Let's use Play Rough. Oh, and then we just need one more of those to take you out. They're using Confuse Rush, but you know, we have enough health to fight this one without fear of Doxbun actually fainting, I'm pretty sure. They're confused, but let's just play Rough. Can they fight through it just to finish off the Ruck Boss Starmobile? Come on, please. Yes, here we go. And look at that, we won this one no problem. Didn't even need to use Terrasalize. I sort of forgot. There we go, Rev of Room is down. And so is Ortega. All right, so I guess that means Team Star is finally fully defeated, right? At least as far as we understand. Ugh, how could I lose? What the heck? About a year and a half ago. Ah, what the heck? Your toy car didn't budge an inch, huh? I told you, it's not a toy. It's called the Stormobile, and I was up all night building it. The problem is clearly that we're not giving it enough juice. You designed this thing to be powered by two Charcadet, but it's just too heavy. It's just a shame. I wanted to see the looks on our bullies' faces when we got it moving. I'm sorry, I really thought it would work. Come, good fellow, tis no occasion for melancholy. Why, to make such a remarkable contraption by thine own hand, genius thy name is Ortega. Yeah, well, there's no point if it doesn't work, is there? If I knew all the effort would have zero payout, I'd have just asked mother to buy a car for us. See, this is why people don't take you seriously. You say some stupid things, you know You know that? What? Mella, cool it, would you? Yeah, how about now? I mean, we even put this in the code, for crying out loud. When we started Team Star, we sort of quit relying on our parents for bags of cash to fix our problems for us. Or did you forget? If that hunk of junk doesn't move, get it moving. If we're short on juice, just gotta crank up the power somehow. Doesn't take a genius, man. That's easy enough to say, Melly. You have an actual plan? Yep, I'm gonna train up my Charcadet to have have them evolve. Their boosted firepower will get the Stormobile moving, no sweat. But the hour of Operation Star, or hour of Operation Star is nigh at hand. Will you succeed in time? Oh, I'll get it done. Melly, wait. You know, Mela shoots her mouth awful and awful, awful lot, but she means well. I know. 
God, this stinks. I hate myself for losing, but I also can't get over how awesome you were in battle. If any of us squad bosses are defeated, that means we have to step down, and going against our code would make me a traitor to the team. Ugh, fine. Not like I have a choice anyway, so take the badge already. You'd better treat it with the respect it deserves. All right then, so Team Star's Fairy Crew defeated. We get the Fairy Badge on Starfall Street. And that should be the last badge too, so that's exciting. I'm not done yet. Here's my favorite TM too. Feel free to marvel at how awesome it is. You obtain TM 079, Dazzling Gleam. Seems good. The user damages opposing Pokemon by emitting a powerful flash. And just so you know, you are the worst. Like the most annoying person ever. But I get it, you're super strong. I'll admit that much. You even busted up my Stormobile. Go Master Ortega. Mr. Harrington. I guess it's time for my piano lesson, huh? As it happens, I just lost my boss title, so I'm all good to head on home. Ah, uh, actually, a different matter brought me. There's somebody I would like you to meet. He's a distant acquaintance of mine. The name's Clive. Okay. What's your business here? I want to tell you something. You're the son of a wealthy family and heir to a major apparel company. So why try to join a group like Team Star? What a question to ask someone you've just met. Well, my answer is the same as everyone else in the team. It's because I was being bullied. So the Academy really did used to have an issue with bullying. Who would have guessed, right? The school is all rainbows and butterflies these days. And bullies from back then don't even go to the Academy anymore. Why? What happened to them? As a former director of the Academy, I believe I am the best position to answer that question. Mr. Harrington. About 18 months ago, the members of Team Star confronted the students who used to bully them, and an altercation broke out between the groups. Though it did not escalate to, into a major incident, the altercation nonetheless caused a scandal of hitherto unknown proportions. As a result of what occurred that day, the students had, who had per per perpetrated the bullying dropped out of the academy, one after another. But, but there aren't any records of that anywhere in the academy. No, I should imagine not. My former deputy deleted all records of the incident, you see. Oh, so Clavel wasn't the principal or whatever, director at that time. What? Why would anyone do that? Just as I was puzzling over how best to deal with Team Star in the aftermath of, aftermath of the incident, a certain student came to see me. This student declared that they would take responsibility for the team's actions. In exchange, they requested that I ex exonerate the other students of Team Star from any blame. Huh? No, no one told me that. I accepted the request and agreed not to take disciplinary action against Team Star. Then, I signed 18 months of overseas study to the student who took responsibility for the team. A year and a half of studying abroad? This was not intended as a punishment, you understand. Team Star were the victims, after all. I wanted the student to take some time to rest, so I had them return home to the Gower region under the pretext of overseas study. So they're in the Gower region. Around that time, however, the former deputy director took it upon himself to erase all traces of the incident from the Academy's servers. It appears his intent was to shield himself from any blame. So he tried to cover up the whole thing? It's terrible. After we discovered what he had done, I dealt with him appropriately, of course. But the inability of myself and the rest of the teaching staff to prevent this terrible act also represented an grave blunder on our part. I accepted the blame that lay at my feet and resigned from my position as director. The rest of the teaching staff then joined me in handing in their notices. So that's why the current teachers were all brought in a year and a half ago. I understand my actions have caused you a great deal of trouble. Give my sincere apologies. Hang on, Mr. Harrington. How come you suddenly decided to talk about this now? Young Master Ortega, Team Star cannot carry on its current, current fashion. I merely wish to give you a chance to chart a better course. Well, there's no way I'm abandoning my friends and going to school without them. Not after we've come this far. Your friends and Team Star must mean a great deal to you. Isn't that obvious? It's because, you know, they're my greatest treasure in the world. So it looks like all of Team Star did find their treasure after all. In a way, they've always been participating in the school. Ooh. 
we learned a lot there, for sure. There's a lot to digest in that one cutscene. About the past of the school and what happened to all the students and teachers. Zebra, it's me. Did you do it? Did you claim or take his star badge? With its boss no longer around, the Rook Boss Squad is as good as finished. So Ortega was the last. All five squad bosses have now been toppled from their pedestals. I imagine they'll have Team Star before long now, they'll leave Team Star before long now that they've lost their special positions. After that, they should soon be back to attending classes at the Academy. Nice work out there, Zebra. Is that Clive I hear? Cassiopeia, well done to you too. Thanks, now about your reward, Zebra. I'll transfer some LP over to your phone, as promised. Well, that's nice, we get 20,000 of it. Very useful. And you can now make more kinds of TMs using the TM machine. Oh, that reminds me. I'm doing the whole supply unit rep thing this time, right? Indeed, you can go ahead and give Zebra his bonus reward now. Really, what happened to the person I'm, whose name I'm forgetting? I don't know. At long last, Operation Starfall has entered its final stage. There's only one thing left on the agenda. You must defeat the big boss and have Team Star disband for good. How though? Don't worry, there's no need to search them out. The true identity of the big boss is none other than me. Whoa, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to keep it from you for so long, but the right moment never came. I'm the one who formed Team Star. Back then, the members of the team were my closest friends, and I treasured them more than anything. If they go on like this, Team Star won't do any good for anyone. They've got to give it up, so I'm using the code we made together to force them to disband. Zebra, I'll be waiting for you at the schoolyard after dark. You should come as well, Clive. Understood. Then I'll see you both there. So I guess we have to come at a specific time too. So, Cassiopeia was the big boss of Team Star this whole time. I scarcely thought it possible. But with this re revelation, I just might have an inkling as to their true identity. It seems we'll find our answers after dark in the Academy's schoolyard. Let's prepare as, as best as we can before heading over. So Cassiopeia was the student who was sent over a year and a half ago to study abroad in the Gower region. We of course still have more to do here across the region. Um, we have now of course done the final Titan battle and the final uh, Team Star crew base, which leaves one more gym battle for us to do over here on Victory Road, the Montenevra gym. So I wanna be challenging the Montenevra gym leader, Rhyme, who of course has um, ghost type Pokemon in the next episode, so we'll set that as our destination. But yeah, today's episode was great. We made more progress with um, completing the main quest. And on top of that, we got a ton more Pokemon. So how many did we get in total? I think um, we are at 207 Pokemon caught so far. So that's really, really good stuff. But for right now, that is gonna wrap it up for today's episode of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.